Vizer is a popular piece of software for performing artists who want to integrate different show control with their show. Integrating MIDI, ArtNet, and other types of signals such as OSC, Vizer is perfect for controlling the light shark. Now, we've showed you before here on our YouTube channel how to use Ableton Live to trigger MIDI notes over to the light shark and get that control. Now, the downside to this, as we explored in that video, is that you need to go out to USB and back through MIDI adapters in order to make it work. Now, it's a rock solid solution once you do that, but what if we could do away with those adapters and just stay within the digital realm? Well, we can do that with OSC. Now, if you haven't already used OSC, it's a popular way of controlling various show control equipment. And the light shark has the ability to use it as well. So the first thing we're going to do is head up here to our menu, head into our main menu, go to the MIDI and OSC tab, and just make sure that OSC is turned on. And the incoming and outgoing ports are set where you need them. Often the defaults are fine, but if you're using multiple OSC devices on the same network, you may feel the need to customize. Take note here of the incoming port of 8000 and the outgoing port of 9000. Now let's go ahead and launch Vizer. Vizer runs on Macs, and here I've got it open with a brand new project. The very first thing I'm going to do is go to the preferences, and we're going to go over to OSC. Now, by default, the OSC output is set to 127.0.0.1, which is the same computer. So what we want to do is go to the network setup page on the LightShark, take down our IP address, and set that in here as the IP address that we want to send OSC. Great. Then we'll verify that the port is the same as on the MIDI and OSC page in the LightShark. And we can see here that the port here, the outgoing port in Vizer, is set to the incoming port in LightShark. Now, for what I'm going to do here for basic triggering, I'm not going to need OSC feedback, but that is available if you choose to experiment with it. Awesome. Well, if you are using OSC feedback, you'll want to go ahead, turn that on, and then set your input port to 9000, okay? Because that lines up, as we can see, with the outgoing port on the light shark. Perfect. Now we can go ahead, close this window, and begin programming. Here on my light shark console, I've got four playbacks, and let me go ahead here and just turn them all off. I'm also going to go ahead. While I'm here, I'll do it from the virtual playback page, and I'll bring down the fader for playback number two. You'll see why in a minute. Now, in the Light Shark manual, on in the OSC section, there's a complete reference to all of the things that the Light Shark can do with OSC, and I've got to tell you, it's very rich. Pretty much anything that you can do in the console, from the console's interface itself, you can do via OSC, unlocking a world of possibilities. In this example, we're just going to look at working with the different playbacks within the Light Shark and not really touch the programming section at all. Over in Vizer, I'm going to go ahead and press the plus to add a new track and add an OSC value track or Apple 4. Now, here we want to enter the OSC value that we found in the Light Shark manual. For this, I'm going to do a playback go. So I'm going to do slash ls. Go slash PB and then slash. And now in the manual, we see an X and that's where we put our playback number. So we'll do playback one here. Perfect. Once you do that, it's time to draw. Now, with an OSC message, zero is the bottom of the message and the highest value it can have is one. And it's going to move between there. Now, for the go and button press type actions in the light shark, your options are zero and one, okay? One being the button pressed, zero being not pressed. And so anything between there is going to read as a zero. Let's go ahead and just uh, drag down, start with a zero. And then I'm going to go up and I'm going to make a one about one second in. Again, you would do this to the tempo of your music. Then we'll go ahead and uh, go back to off at any point we want. Again, once the console sees that on event is when it's going to trigger the on. and then. We'll go back on a second later. Oops. Looks like I need to do a little bit here at the bottom, and then we'll go back on. 
and then we'll go back off. Awesome. Now, if we go ahead and play that back, what we're going to see here is that it indeed does fire that cue and it presses go a few more times in coordination with this graph I've drawn. Perfect. Let me get back to the start. So that's how we can fire a cue on a regular playback, but let's have some more fun because yeah, firing cues and pressing go via the Vizor control is cool, but what's really cool is that you can control the level of the fader as well, meaning that we could control the level of intensities, we could control the level of the effects. We could control the effect speed, the effect size. We could control any LTP parameters like color, like position, and have that real-time fader control all automated from Vizor along with our music or whatever other type of composition we're doing. For this, I'm going to go ahead and create an OSC color track. Now, there may be other ways to do this, but this is the best way that I've found because the OSC color allows you to go ahead and modify the total value that you put out so it's not limited at one and we can see that the value for the fader is 0 to 255 which makes sense because this matches up with dmx so for this i'm going to go with at ls slash level slash pb and then our slash our number which is going to be two now i'm going to click standard right here which is zero to one. And this brings up our, our color track preferences. Now, technically we're sending a color over OSC, but at the end of the day, it's gonna be a numerical value. So I'm gonna go ahead to integer array and set the zero as the minimum and 255 as the max and press apply. Now we get this color. And so basically we're gonna go in here and fully transparent is gonna be zero and white is gonna be 255. And then anywhere in between on opacity is going to be a fade. And so really simply here, I can just go here and you can see I drew here, starts out, then it turns white. Now it's going to opaque, bring it up to 50% opacity maybe, and then bring it up to full. Watch now as I play this track. Actually, we'll do it on the virtual playback page so it's really clear. We can see the fader move up and down, and we also see that first cue play. Both are working exactly as we programmed them. Here it comes again. And so we can really see here how this can be really powerful. In fact, any of the buttons we have can be controlled here by Vizor in the light chart. Let's go ahead, actually, and do an executor. I'll go over to my executor page here, and as we can see, I've got a nice grid built of different looks. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and create a regular OSC value because uh, the executor is going to be a zero to one value. And then it's going to be ls slash executor, make sure you spell that right, slash, and then it has an x, y, and z command. x is going to be the page, so I'm on page one. y is going to be the position. Uh, let's do the row position, let's do row two, and button two, button three, why not? All right, so that's the X and the Y. And then once I've done that, I can go ahead and, and build another track in here that says zero to ones. Just to show that firing, and, and now we'll press play, and we can see it fires and turns on and off as with the command that we give it in Vizor. I hope this video has helped you to really see some new ways that you can use the light shark in, in exciting ways. In fact, if you haven't used the light shark before, maybe you're a Vizor user, the light shark is a really great way to be able to control lighting for uh, an intermediate level show. You get really fine grain control for a reasonable cost. And as you can see here, the abilities for the light shark to accept external control are very advanced, very complex, and you can really do a lot with it. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe, and we will be back soon with more videos on how to use the Light Shark. Thanks.